Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Resonance Arcade. It is Wednesday night, and we are live. How you doing, guys? Hello. Good. Afternoon. Hey, Good okay. Evening. As you can see, we've got a full complement today, and uh, we've got a yep. very special, uh, special uh, sub... Uh, what's it called? Uh, that thing Subject? above me. Anyway, no. Well, topic? yeah, our topic today, as you may have already guessed by the uh, outrageous art that Lou has kindly done... Um, for, for Sam's photograph this week. Uh, it is about art. It's about games as art. <laughs> <laughs> and and Lou and Sam didn't know that. See it, yeah. So um yeah, well well when you see it you'll uh, you'll experience I think I think that is magnificent. I think that's a, a that is a work of art in itself. <laughs> <laughs> I think mean, it, it came to me and I just asked Lou so to quickly, <laughs> quickly The lipstick actually it. suits you Sam. <laughs> There's no lipstick on that. There's I'm not, lips. I'm not even sure. Natural lips. Yeah. That's just nice. my natural uh, colour. Thank you very much. I'm not even sure where the uh, uh, where the photo comes from. I can't. I can't remember which one that is. If I've seen it before. It's, it's just, I just look for one on his Facebook profile. <laughs> So yes, today's uh, subject is games as art. It's something that's been talked about since uh, since 1989 or something like that. I, th I was doing a bit of Wiki Wikipedia reading earlier, and uh, it's been it's been a controversial subject for for many many years. And there are lots of people who are high up in the games industry, and also lots of people, you know, lots of gamers that all have different opinions. So again, that's what this show's about: us all arguing and disagreeing with each other and telling each other that we're wrong, and then me basically winning at the end and. Uh, Closing the show down when we've right, established that, yeah, what what I say is correct. That's uh, that is how it works. Fair enough. So to <laughs> to to kick off then, um, it, how do we define art? Because this is the this is the main the main problem. We had the same problem last week. How do you actually define what art is to start off with, and how do you say art games are or are not art? Well, I've heard that definition of art is something that is appreciated just for its own values, not for anything that it can do. No, um, no. <laughs> straight away. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> no. Just no. Just straight no. away. No, no. 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 Carry on. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> isn't isn't art just an expression of creative skill? Not um, necessarily skill. You, not you... necessarily. By my definition, art is just something that's been made by somebody that elicits some form of an emotional response in the people that observe it or take part in it. By that definition, Sam, yes, games are art. Yeah, but that's every conversation. Yes. Yeah, okay, let's. But, but, the, the, but then everything is because it's let's a really get the poor actual definition. dictionary no, definition no, of art. This is the problem. Oh, we may have a dictionary different definition, maybe, possibly, but. I suppose, yeah, if we work off a dif dictionary definition that we have for the other ones, yeah. it may The expression sense. or application of human creative skill and imagination, typically in a visual form such as painting or sculpture, producing works to be appreciated primarily for their beauty or emotional power. Mm. All right, that, so... That definition... What we've, all said, what we've all said is kind of there. Yeah, that's... <laughs> I, th I think we're all pretty much pointing towards the same direction then. Yeah. But by that definition, that reads differently from what Sam said said to me because the the very end part of that, I can't remember what, exactly what you just said, but it it, it made me think. <laughs> no, games aren't. Then, what was the end part? The last sentence. Uh, the last sentence was uh, producing works to be appreciated primarily for their beauty or emotional power. Yeah, that that's kind of similar to what I thought it was in that you but appreciate just for the, the the first statement is an expression or application of human creative skill and imagination typically in a visual form that yes yeah. that is that is that's that I agree games would be out under that but the the qualifying expression says that they have that their primary objective is to be visually pleasing yeah but that doesn't mean that's something whose secondary um feature that is beautiful or ev evokes emotional power cannot be art. There's been a lot of things that have been created that haven't intended to be art that have subsequently became art. Yes, you know, you're right there. Yeah. I mean, architecture, for example, which were built as very functional buildings at the time, just in the style that was accepted, are now classed as art, retrospectively. Are they actually classed well, as art by everybody or are they another one that's hard to define, though? <clears throat> I think with it being such a woolly subject, you're always going to get people that, that disagree with art being art or even great works of art being great works of art. Some people might say that, you know, um, 
like Monet or something isn't that good an artist. They prefer another artist, but I know they're still qualifying it as art. But there are so is that, sorry, is art really just whatever we classify it to be then? Is it literally a case of if something, you said yeah. this about retrospectively applied art. I if, think, if everyone likes something. I think very much that art is in the eye of the beholder. Mm. Yeah, I was going to say that phrase. At the risk of going into cliche corner. Yeah. That, that cliche exists for a reason. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. What I perceive to be beautiful, you guys may not, and vice versa. Well, mm. I'm I'm not a fan of art in the classical sense. Personally, I've never really seen much. I mean, I can appreciate that they are, you know, great works of art because they've been labelled as that. And I can appreciate the skill that goes into it. But I don't personally value that as something. But I still wouldn't deny that it's art. I said... I've been around a lot of uh, art galleries across Europe um, because I'm, you know, quite a cultured chap. <laughs> um, you know, to see like masterworks and what have you. And like the most recent one, I was in Belgium and I went to uh, the, the masterworks uh, e exhibition they had on there. And there's there's a lot of portraitures there. You know, a lot of sculptures of you know people, lords, kings, you know, whoever was important at the time. And although you look at the picture and think, well, that's not, you know, that doesn't jump out and evoke emotions you can appreciate them from a technical level where you actually look and you think crazy amount of time that, that must have taken the skill in order for someone to do that you know without the aid of modern technology you know having basically a person sat there and doing it not being able to work from a photograph or from a picture that you've already created doing it from memory necessarily so i don't know i, 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 I think the creative skill aspect is quite important in it because although you you wouldn't necessarily interpret everything that you see as art. You've got to appreciate the skill that someone has to be able to create some of these things. Ah, okay. So modern art then. Now we look at modern art. Well, we look at people throwing shit at walls and you know uh, creating abstract, <laughs> abstract like weird sculptures that mean nothing to anybody apart from the artist, and yeah. everybody interprets it their own way. They have art status still. Well, that they create Whereas interesting. That does, that thing because I, even. It, even if everyone's shouting on about how it's not art or how it's rubbish, what about something like Tracy Emmy's unmade bed? Because no. you could yeah. easily go, that's terrible, that's rubbish. You just basically left a messy bed in an art gallery and got paid loads for it. But the fact that everyone was talking about it and had a, even a negative emotional reaction makes it as valid in some ways as a positive reaction. Yeah. It, yes. Even but, if no, it's but abhorrent, no, no, what, it's still... You, missed, you didn't let me finish my sentence for once. Actually, someone cut in on me for once. Um, that Before Chris finishes that... <laughs> Steve, Steve just said that he, he, you you defined it as something that has that, that requires skill, and I'm I'm stating that modern art generally, with exceptions, obviously this is a actually I'll take the generally back as well. Some modern art is absolutely skillless, and it just happens to be popular for some reason, or, or you know I, I I personally don't get it. As I said, I don't get like classical art, but. It doesn't have to be skillful. I think. I, don't I, think, that... I think when it comes into art, there's a lot of different facets, and I think that any one of them can be deemed as being valid when you're uh, when you're stating that some it's art. For example, music, movies, films. None of these things have very much in common. They all very much play on a different vein of human creativity, but they're all valid art forms. Mm. I was surprised that music wasn't in that dictionary definition you had there because it says typically visual, but it's like yeah. eh, music's a huge, huge part of what people consider to be art and, and yeah. beauty and all that kind of stuff. I get more of a, a reaction personally from music than I do from any movie or any piece of art that I'd see. Yeah. So I mean, I I, 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 I consider music art, but is it defined as art? I, I'm I suppose it's musical arts, isn't it? You, you get that as a yeah. College degree. I would say like if you if you take if you take a piece of footage um, uh, that's got like say you take a, a bit of a movie that's got a really epic scene in it that you love, unless it's a scene that had deliberately didn't have music in the first place, take the music away from that. Like any scene from like I don't know whatever Star Wars or any film or however highbrow lowbrow you want to get, you take that epic music away or that emotional music and the scene plays completely differently. Yeah. Like the way that music and visual things go together. It has a massive impact on you. That that's the same as sound, though. If you take off a laughter track, I mean, I saw something on YouTube a while back. I don't find it funny anyway, but someone took the laughter track off. Um, uh, what's that? Big geek? Bang Theory. Show. Yeah, Big Bang Theory, and it was just totally unfunny. But it was totally unfunny regardless. You yeah. know, I've, 
put it all... That's quite interesting because uh, I've been recently re-watching uh, the Red Dwarf series. And uh, I'm thinking I'm on to season six, season seven. Uh, okay. And on s- season seven... Um, season seven it'll be. Yeah, seven. Uh, and on season seven they've done a few extended versions of the... Uh, the, the televised shows, the half hour ones that are like 50, uh, 45 minutes long, the extended ones, but they haven't got the laughter tracking. Hmm. Does and it feel uh, weird? It's a different experience. Wasn't it completely absent from Series 8, I think it was? There was no laugh track at all in Series 8. I haven't got back up to 8 yet. I haven't seen 8 in years. So. I'm pretty sure mm. that one of, the, one of the series doesn't have any laughter in it, and it's really weird. It also <clears throat> tried to make it look film, filmic as well. Yeah. So I can... Well, that's a- that's a kind of that's a form of comedy that, and I'm gonna say that <laughs> this is making me gonna sound really snobbish, but that's the kind of comedy that like good comedy shows have evolved past the point of needing a live studio audience. Like I don't need a live studio audience of other people to tell me what's funny. I'm not saying there are some br- absolutely brilliantly amazing comedy shows that did have that laugh audience, but now the kind of shows that have a live studio audience is like Mrs. Brown's Voids, pretty much the lowest of the low. Yeah. So, like a, a modern comedy show stands on its own without everyone laughing to tell you when it's funny, rather than I laugh when I find it funny. No. I think I think anyway, we can that's... all I think we can all agree then that art as as a definition is subjective, essentially, isn't it? Yeah. We yeah. can't really agree on it, and we could spend the entire show talking about what is art. Now, if we focus directly on our games art and why our games art, then I start to struggle a little bit. Not because I disagree that games are art. I think there's artistic elements in games. I just think that you don't judge the Mona Lisa like five out of ten, do you? But games, all games get. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, you, well, that's but, a review, isn't it, Julie? Yeah, but you don't get that with art. I, I haven't. I haven't seen. You do. You get a critique. You don't get. You get obviously, they yeah, them like. This has got five paintbrush, paintbrushes out of eight. But, but the critique. Let me. Let me. <laughs> but the critique is not. It's not definitive. Again, it is subjective. Reading a piece of text, yeah, reading a piece of text, and then summarizing at the end doesn't doesn't. The text won't read the same to everybody, so everyone will have their own opinion. They would all, if they had to, all mark it out of ten from the review that they've just read of that piece of art. They would all mark it differently. The same goes for reviewers, but it is a standard across the games industry. Every game, if it becomes popular, you know, popular enough to gain attention. It will have a, a market, you know, a, a market. Yeah, I don't think do I can't think of any other art that gets that. They do the same that. with books and they do the same with music. That's not true of every game, though. That's generalising quite a lot. I mean, there are certain games which are created to be um, kind of an everyman experience that everyone can enjoy it. It's kind of average. Um, it's it's those games that get ten out of ten in all the crap official um, magazines for cons- consoles and stuff, mm-hmm. um, or PC gamer, but. Then you get games which are released purely on the basis of them wanting to express something. Games like um, like like Ico and things like that. Like what? Sorry. Ico is it? Ico, um, right? Sorry. Yeah. Um, Shadow of the Colossus. The Journey Ico. was another one. Yeah. Journey's great. <laughs> and these are games that are not they're not they're not designed to be big sellers. Designed to to be expressions that. That also are playable or interactive in some way. Yeah. So they're, they're, you can't really generalize with games. There are games which are artistic, artistically driven, but there are also games, usually the big AAA titles, which are not, just then, because it just makes yeah, sense to. That's, have a niche, that's have classifying a niche them as artistic in in the classical sense of the word, where you know something has got to be, you know, it's got to be created in a certain way, and you know, look a certain. So you that's where it becomes very difficult for me because that that applies to other forms of media as well because you've got you've got your your sort of um you've got your journey on one end of the spectrum and then you've got like, let's just put it out there because it's easy call the duty on the other right but then you've got that in music as well at one end you've got like Mozart on the other end you've got Lady Gaga do you know what I mean it, like you've got cinema you've got Michael yeah. Bay and then you've got you know Coppola and stuff so it like it, <laughs> I've got to say that Lady Gaga classes herself as an artist more than a musician. So she's quite serious about 
Yeah. What she does is being expressionist. And again, this is, is where the subjectivity comes into it. There it doesn't matter what you talk about. Everybody's going to have a different opinion. Lady Gaga's popular for a reason. We don't know what that reason is, personally, but you know, uh, she she puts on a good show. Maybe I don't know. But okay, let's say let's say One Direction then, because they are definitely <laughs> cynical. <laughs> They're cynical. definitely not art. They are definitely a cynical boy band put together by probably grumpy old middle aged men to make little girls wet their pants. So. That yeah. I can legitimately yeah, say. Yeah, and they did it live on television, the X crap. Factor. Yeah. <laughs> but, I, I, right, so I, I'm, there were so many things I wanted to say then, I've all <laughs> forgot every single one of them. Well, let's break it down. So, a, com a video game, a computer game, whatever you want to label it, is an expression or application of human creative skill from the off. It's definitely ticked that box. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it's in a visual form. That I, I don't think that's really necessary because you can have art that isn't in a visual can form. A, can an individual piece of art be made by more, for more than one by more than one person? Yeah. Sort of music, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, music's it's, often made yeah. by more than one person, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, go on. Yeah. Um, blah 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 blah. Appreciated primarily for uh, for their beauty or emotional power. Some games. Now, that, Some... that, this is one of the points I was going to. I forgot about and wanted to make. Some games are visually beautiful, but they have an end. You know, that the, the primary objective is to get to the end of the game. Some games look amazing. They've got brilliant gameplay, you know, or, or they've got, they could have any combination of them, but they may look absolutely beautiful. But is, is the game itself considered art, or is the art in the game considered art? Mm, that's interesting. Oh, the individual okay, yeah. components. As I mean, as a developer who's trying to put a game together, I can I can see how distinct all of the separate parts of a game are. Uh, can you, I, can you break it up separately? Sorry, Lou. What do you mean? What? Um, well, can you can you break up the completed? product yes it's a right well that bit's art but that bit isn't they sell they sell merchandise for games which you may consider art some of it um posters are they art for games I and mean, that's not so a game the itself, recreation it? of something well, but, well then you've also got say. then you've also got the music that comes out of a game an ost and then that is art because that is music. that's like saying if you get a mug with a mona lisa on the front it's art we've got a, we've got a mug on a mona lisa Hey. It's a mug <laughs> of it's a mug with a with a piece of art on the mug. Yeah. The mug itself isn't, I guess. I mean, primarily, it's it depends which way you take it. I mean, if, if you look at the AAA titles, I don't think you can really class them in there because they're they're made with the sole purpose of making money. Mm -hmm. But not, not yes. all of them are because because but does that, I mean, there's a few AAA titles that cross the line. I think a couple of them. Chad? So are Got you the saying... examples? Um, I, 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 because I've already put it in my top five games and bring it up all the time. The Last of Us is pretty much a triple A game for the PS3 that does cross that line. Like, if you were to say that, say from that same studio, Uncharted is like the Indiana Jones blockbuster. Yeah. Uncharted is like the gritty HBO drama version, like of of that kind of game, and it does it does have the aesthetics and the As story the and the other stuff, and it's got the emotional power. Yeah. So is it is 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 it something that can just tick one of these boxes of one or more of these boxes you can classify as art? I, I don't know because it depends on how how what you want your art to do for you. Like, is it got to be is it got to be something that really takes your breath away with its beauty? You sort of start crying and going, "Oh God, it's changed my life." Or is that <laughs> is that a ridiculous expectation for a well, piece of media? What do to people have? do with art? Look at it. They appreciate it. Yeah, so it's not just look at it, yeah. So that's primarily the function of it. So if if you have a book that's considered an, um, a masterpiece, you enjoy reading it, a movie, you enjoy watching it, a picture, you enjoy looking at it, music, you enjoy listening to it. Is a computer game version of art just something that you can constantly, well, not constantly, but you can go back to regularly and just re-enjoy the experience? Hmm. I don't know. But just something you said that just made me think, what about the individual levels in an individual game? Would I class... I mean, I would class um, something like um, this This map is god fun as art. <laughs> I really would. I really would when you think about it. It's it's art in a very, like, surreal... and it, it's, it's expressing... Abstract. It's expressing that person who, even if they didn't do it as a joke, which I'm still convinced someone must... It was a three-year-old or someone who was doing <coughs> it as a joke, you know? Some, someone did it as a joke, yeah. Utterly terrible. I mean, it's just hilarious. To, to, but it, it's still 
put together. It's with a bit of skill. It still makes someone, in, you know, appreciate it and enjoy it. Appreciate some part of it. The fact that it's insane, you know. Sorry, but, can you just explain what that is? I don't know so what the hell you're talking about. We have talked about it before, I think, when we were talking about levels. But this map is god fun. <laughs> is um, it's a it's a map where there was a there was a. Do you, do you know something awful dot com? No. Have you heard of it? Somethingawful.com was a it's a like a satire site, you know, like a, a e-bombs world type thing. Or... The Onion, but before the Onion. Yeah, and a, and but anyway, there was subsections of the site. One was called Cranky Steve's, which was like this guy, this really old cranky guy who used to review maps and just say how terrible they were. But it was mainly Quake and Unreal maps. And one of them was this map is god fun. And we downloaded it and played it at a few lands. And it was just basically you spawned in lava, screaming instantly. And then you walk <laughs> through, you walk through another area, and you suddenly drop out of the sky. It's just utterly terrible. Really, it's not even designed, but it's still a form of art because this guy's obviously put effort into putting that lava cube there and in in my <laughs> eyes it is anyway but then you look at something like quake 2 dm1 quake 2 dm1 is not art you're gonna call it art no, no I, I wouldn't say, say that's art because that is functional it's to do a particular job is to have a death match on it the other <laughs> this argument's been i've I've heard this argument not not applied to computer games but I've heard it before whereas art cannot be anything that's functional I don't get what that is because mm. that form and function aren't mutually exclusive. Of course they're not. This it is was, that thing you said about architecture. Yeah, it, 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 it was discussed, I think it was um, some conference about uh, car design and they were saying that a, a car cannot be classed as art because it's a functional item. I don't necessarily agree gear. with that. Sorry? That was on Top Gear. So, uh, <laughs> Top Gear done an episode, but this was way before that. All right, okay. Um, I don't think Top Gear would talk about that sort of shit, would they? Did. But they tried chuck in some sort of a few racist comments as they were talking about it. <laughs> they were talking about um, talking about uh, what was it? The uh, Alfa Brera, weren't they? Yeah. Uh, said that was ours. all right. Fair news. Um, I've lost my train of thought now. Sorry, Sorry. I've got a feeling. This <laughs> I was is about the, about the fun functional functional things uh, can't be ours. Yeah, I, I, I don't necessarily agree with that uh, because I think that certain buildings, structures, bridges are very very aesthetically pleasing. And they're just nice to look at without actually using them. Mm. But, but that, maybe that's that fills, it. Maybe, that fills one of them, though, doesn't it? One of the criteria. Maybe that's it. The, 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 the part of it that you, the part of it that you appreciate just for the sake of it, is the artistic part of it. Yeah. In the same way that if you know, there's there's that there's that dodgy uh, sculpture in the middle of Middlesbrough called Spectra Text. Basically, it's a big silver pillar covered in LEDs. You can text some uh, text it with a random whatever oh, no. you want i love you or whatever and it changes color depending on what you text it and that is that is ostensibly classed as a piece of art i thought you were going to say function. the text shows up on it but the function is just to create a response in you hmm. can i just ask you is that thing as unpleasant as it sounds that you <laughs> it is, it <laughs> yeah, it's hideous. you were talking about uh, it with a little, a little bit of endearment in your voice slightly well, no but the, the thing is it's right in the middle of middlesbrough and it is classed as art We've got and loads of stuff on the prom kind of... here. No, I I mean, you, yeah. Just horrible structures. There's just blobs in the middle of nowhere. I think they're great. <laughs> See, th th this is we can. I I wouldn't consider that art, but it is art. It's been defined as art. Now, I went thing... to an installation a few years ago um, in the Natural History Museum, I think, uh, in in London, and basically all it was was a wall filled with um, little LED panels and. Uh, and what it basically done is it just randomly took four letter words from uh the, just from the internet and just put them on there. <laughs> which was just random idea. You, you just saw like all sorts of shit and cunt and fucking fish <laughs> and like, you know, tree and duck and, uh, and, and everything else. Right, let's yeah. stop there, right? <laughs> <laughs> we know we know words. <laughs> letters. But, but that was classed as art. No, it hasn't got a function. It wasn't very aesthetically pleasing. It, it was amusing for a, for a time. Imagine how difficult um, the authorities find classifying things as art or not. Now, the I, I've the the I read something in that Wikipedia article saying that the um, I know it's Wikipedia, but I, you know, usually it's it's okay to to agree with some of it. I um, hold Wikipedia in high regard. I, I I do. I mean, I. I there's a few times I've found mistakes, but we're only human, all of us. Anyway, um, uh, Wik the, the, that Wikipedia said that the U.S. Supreme Court has has ruled games 
as a, a creative work specifically, and that was many, many years ago, in the 90s, I think. And they... Um, that kind of gives it a tax status as well. To, you know, they can get money off things and they can claim. And the, and the same is applying in the UK as well. Game developers can get tax breaks for things. But does that mean that it's art? Does that they haven't classified it as art? They've classified it as a creative work, which is a broader term for art. Maybe that's where we get in our definitions mixed up. Maybe that maybe what we what maybe game is gaming is just a creative work and not art. Can I just ask a simple question to to all of us? Do we all believe that games can be art? Yes. Yeah. I do as well. I think they already are. A lot of them already are. It. I said it. It entirely is subjective on on <laughs> what your opinion of Have, art is. You, what, well, you've already said that a map in a game you could class as art. Did I but say well, that? I suppose but, yeah, okay. yeah well, you, well, you did. I suppose your problem is that you don't think that the whole package is art. You think yeah, that there well, are artistic parts of games. But Steve said that as well earlier on. He said that uh, is a game as a whole art. Yeah. I don't well, think, well, I to, I don't think well, the packaged product is is art. It's not to be... I, but does I that depend know. on the product? I mean, do, if a game has been designed entirely with the graphics and the sound and the music and the gameplay to evoke a particular emotion like, like Journey does... Isn't the whole product then art? The most sensible thing, sorry, I was listening, but the most sensible thing, what Potato Power has ever just said, a car is not art, but a picture of a car is. No, because a picture of a car is a, a picture. A drawing. It's not a car. Okay, a drawing of a car then. What, what about a painting of a car? No, that, that's a painting. Yeah, it's I, not I, a car. Yeah. But then, but then if, it, if you thought yeah. the car was drawn, wasn't it? But then, you know, when they're designing cars, people draw that design. Yes, and then same, it goes, into a car. same goes for so, any architecture or anything like that. Like Steve said, it's engineering. You can you could class if, an engineer as an artist or a developer as an artist. If you put an E-type Jag in front of me, I would sit and look at it for an undisclosed amount of time. But I would just appreciate <laughs> the lines, the curves, the spokes in the wheels, the way the windshield's got that really harsh curve, the hump in the bonnet as it goes up. The whole package, just the look of it, I, I wouldn't have to drive it. I'd want to drive it, but I wouldn't have to drive it to appreciate it. Now, if, if you took a picture of that and put it on the wall, yeah, it, it's a nice picture, but it's not the car. No, mm. but the picture would be classed as art. It wouldn't yeah, it'd be classed as a picture is, of a car. Yeah, it's someone's, someone's interpretation of the, the, the car or someone's okay, interpretation a, of the, yeah. pain, the car. A painting, a painting of the car, then. Take the yeah, it's out a of painting it. of a car, not the car. That's like saying uh, that <laughs> Mona Lisa no... is art because there's a painting of her. No, the painting of her is art. She in herself, when she was alive, wasn't art. But I just she said that. I just said that, and you just said that the painting of the car is not art. No, no it's, a... it's a paint. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! But it says. Uh... <laughs> We're going to implode our own brains today, aren't we? <laughs> Sorry, but that's exactly what you just said. It's like a painting... He's got you there. Are paintings art or not, then? Uh, yes. Does, yeah, does, it have to be, is... does it have to reach a certain regard before it becomes art? The, the subject of, of a painting doesn't really matter because if, if, a, if a painting's art, then it's a painting. Whether it's of a car or a tree or a fish, it's a painting. If that, a painting's that is art, the art, so it has to... What's what's that if then? So the pa paintings no, aren't by default art. No, but what I'm saying is that I would say that a car design is in a finished product. The car can be art. What you were saying is that if a car can't be art, a picture of a car can be. I was like, you know, but that's just a picture. I know what Steve's saying. I kind of get it. I think that they both can be. I think the car can be, and so can the picture of the car. Personally, yeah. yeah if the picture's particularly nice. Well, yeah, you know, but that, well, if whether it's, it's nice, nice or not, it's subjective, isn't it? It's got the yeah. right mountains in the background and the sun's shining at the right angle, and there's some ducks on the pond behind you, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, I mean, like <clears throat> Lou back in his town when he had his gay sports car, he used he took some very artistic shots of his car and sunset on kind of like a wintry night with the yeah uh, the clouds looking quite mean and intense. That was an artistic photograph. The car in that subject isn't art, but the picture was. But the car was... would be art to the person who oh. who designed Not necessarily. it. Necessarily, but 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 what Steve's saying is that because the co concept what, artists what, 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 would have would have drawn pictures of the car before it became a car, and that would have would, been art. But, 
But they would have been doing that so that the engineers could get an idea of what it was going to look like. Whereas what I was doing was trying to represent the, a, a feeling to go along with the car. Yeah. And I guess that's the crux of art, is that it's about eliciting uh, an emotional response to the thing. But you can't, that's, a, that's nearly everything to a human elicits some kind of emotional response. So we can class nearly everything as art. That door behind me might... I might really, Did you really have particularly love particularly strong color. feelings for that door. That, I, really, I might really like, like that color, and I might think that that uh, that door is the most beautiful door I've seen in my entire life, and it's better. It's it's more attractive than the Mona Lisa to me. Then that to you is art, isn't it? Then we've just answered our own question, so let's stop going around in circles with it because <laughs> it, it is. Yeah, it in, is. The broad, in the in the broadest possible terms, pretty much any single human endeavor that's ever been <laughs> endeavored can be seen. <laughs> as art in some form or other. Yeah. That's that's kind of true. Yeah. But this... I think there's there's levels, aren't there? There's gradients. That's what I was talking about the musical thing. You've got your sort of the 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 very basic functional thing, but then it's just, it is totally subjective. So you can't I can't you you can't sit a thirteen year old girl down and say, do you think um, One Direction is art? And she and and guarantee that she's going to say burst no. into tears. <laughs> You know, I mean, I'm, I, I would imagine that she doesn't really have the concept of art. We've been that young, but you know, but there well, are, there are artists younger than that. To me about that <laughs> it's dropping to your knees on me, mummy. Straight your danger. Do you think I should be in One Direction, love? <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that, Chris. That's terrifying. It's terrifying to me. I'm not going to sleep tonight. Uh, so, <laughs> so yes, um, I think the answer to our question to to we don't have to talk for the rest of this now is yes. <laughs> um, sure well, done. there's 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 this, the other bits of the subject that we've put in the document is the way that video games have had to one how they've been recently perceived as art and it's it's quite a new thing or for a lot of people it's quite a new thing and the fact that gaming as a as an industry or gamers as a sort of subculture. Have had to sort of fight for that status a little bit, and um, and the sort of things that have gone along with that, like Chris said, that recent ruling in the United States, because uh, they, uh, weren't they trying to pass some sort of law um, a couple of years ago to do with games? I can't remember what it was called. There was a there was an online petition about it and everything. And I've completely forgot what it. Rings bells to me as well, but I can't think what well, it is. No. Um, yeah, but, no, that that that. Point of um, the point of uh, what you have forgotten. I think we're going to have this whole show of us just going. No, there's so much to think about. I can't think. I can't remember what I just was. What I just said. So games, games, are, games are, are given. Well, game developers and games are sometimes given grants and things like that from artistic funds as well. Um, mm. No, I didn't put that in the in the thing. I'm sure. I'm sure the national lottery's probably given some money to some game related thing at some point. Um, but they've also given money to many other creative things, like making hardware or you know doing um, putting an art installation in, you know, something like that. So you can't always say that they're just giving things to art. So that doesn't classify a game as art either. I think. I think the, one of the... Sorry, go on, Chris. I was going to say. I think. I think to me. It is. It is. I'm gonna. I, I agree with everything you guys have said. I've just been playing devil's advocate for the whole thing. I, I basically do think that games can be construed as art, or at least parts of those games can be construed as art. Certain scenes at certain angles are more arty than others. But that is that art. Is that? But then you, you know, it's. Uh, it's. It's all about kind of the experience, isn't it? And it's it is, all yeah. about accepting that you. You um, value that in some way. You value that as something that gives you oral or visual pleasure. I think. I think it can kind of it goes also it also goes back to the intentions of the designer, doesn't it? Like if you had a really good experience of the game and you felt really moved by it, but it wasn't intended, does that make it art? Yes, that's a bit of an emergent gameplay type thing there. Remember, but, uh, I, I disagree scene. with the original uh, original intentions of the artist because there's so much accidental art in the world, as Steve said earlier. You yeah, can't I do. I... Because is remember, um, well, there's a couple of examples. One is we've all seen indie game the movie, correct? Mm -hmm. I think, yeah. and that the guy who designed and made Braid mm -hmm. um, 
was talking about how people didn't get his game or didn't get it on the level that he wanted them to. And he was upset yeah. about that. And he kind of came off as being a little bit of a tit. But, uh, yeah, because it's like, well, people are enjoying the game on their own levels. And this, you know, this is something we talked about last week about once something's been put out there, it isn't the artists anymore. It's the mm. people that, that, that appreciate it. It's theirs. It means something to them. The same way that like we want the original Star Wars, we want the whatever. Um, yeah, I agree. There's loads of times, like, Chris has obviously put in there that Hideo Kojima doesn't consider games to be art. Now, I know everyone can argue about Metal Gear Solid one way or the other, but there's also there's quite a lot of creators that will create something and then just dismiss it, but they've got loads of adoring fans that think it's absolutely amazing, and they just sort of go, meh. But so they... I don't think the artist themselves is actually that important. What they create is the person that made it isn't the same way that like you look up the lives of most of your favorite singers they all end up being bellends it doesn't matter because the songs they made are fucking awesome yeah I, mm. the person who did it is is very has very little to do with whether it's art or not in my opinion there may be an artist they may be considered an artist but people have become artists from like not actually intending to become be artists you know i agree with that i, I, I don't think that the, the original artist's interpretation of it uh, should be considered really because it's all about how you interpret it, what your what emotions it evokes in you, your story behind it, how you interpret it and then incorporate that into your like emotional makeup. See for me that so, doesn't that doesn't count as art anymore for me. I think art is deliberate. I don't think art is is accidental. If you ever walk around an art gallery um, and you have the people stood there who who've obviously researched on the artist and they can explain what it is, uh, what the artist's intent is. But what they always say to you, and I'm not a massive art fan by any measure, I have been to art galleries, uh, but what they always say to you after they tell you what the artist's intention was or what the interpreted artist's intention was, was what does it say to you? Yeah, art, point art is meant to make you think, it's meant to evoke a, a, an emotion. It now, is, but that's, that's what I'm saying. It, our it is emotional makeup that. is is basically built on the experiences that you've had through your life. So in which case, there's no two people the same. The people are very similar, but there's no two people that have went through the same life experiences. So no two people can gauge emotions in the same way, have the same reaction to things in the same way. Some people like the color blue. Some people like a sunset. You know, it's it, it's completely down to the individual and your take on it, what it says to you. You know, I, I can play you dark side of the moon. And it'll put you in a certain mindset and make you feel a certain way and think a certain way. It'll be completely different to me and it'll be completely different to what Gilmore and Waters and Co. originally meant when they made it. Mm. So I, I don't think that you can really take the, uh, the original intention too much to heart. Yes, it's what caused them to feel that way in order to create that in the first place, but that doesn't translate. Yeah, I, mm. I agree. Yeah. I 100% I agree with everything you just said. I was just playing some bread then, and uh, while I was watching it, it just made me think: Did did um, Jonathan Blow actually say that he thought it was art, or did he he say that he had that people just missed the reason for it? I don't remember him even saying it was art, but he was kicking off that people weren't getting it, and people were just yeah. enjoying it as a game. I remember him watching some or some YouTube videos being shown of some kids playing it and going this is crazy this guy goes backwards and stuff and and then they showed a very <laughs> clever clip of Jonathan Blow going well but some people just didn't get the intention and it quite upset me you know that kind of thing I'm para obviously massively That's, paraphrasing yeah. and artists are like typically very stroppy like that quite pretentious isn't it that yeah. um, no you can't say that because I, I I I if if you consider games art I'm an artist I don't think there's, I'll be stroppy about There's artists out game. there who are quite willing to let their creation just go into the world and be interpreted. Of course. There's, there's artists out there who want people to, to, to get a certain thing about it. So, but I intended this, you must think this. Th this is going back to the thing that I said before about John Carmack and his unintended physics. Yeah. And he, he, didn't, he didn't want people to appreciate his mistakes. Yeah, people have, and people are saying, oh, you did great work there. That game was brilliant because you can bunny hop and rocket jump. And he was like, well, no, they, they were genuine programming errors that we made. You shouldn't be appreciating them. We wanted to get rid of them, but you told us not to. Mm. You know, if it kind of turns things around a bit when it's like that, when someone's appreciating something that you're not yourself proud of. But that happens in, uh, in art as well, in, in classical art, doesn't it? 
You've got yeah. you've got artists that make mistakes, and that's what makes that p- particular picture famous, and that's what makes that particular photo, uh, you know, well, popular with yeah, people. That's why they like the, it. The yeah, the Mona Lisa. While we're on on the topic, I mean, the the enigmatic smile in that picture, the kind of weird facial expression, is possibly its most famous attribute. Well, it's it's the it's the beauty that you can find within imperfections because that is such a core part of yeah. the human experience I mean, that transcends all different barriers. Yeah. It's like nothing is ever going to be perfect. There's always going to be things wrong with it, <clears> and you can find beauty in that concept, and that goes into all kinds of art and everything. Yeah. I mean, the thing that um, that Lou mentioned there about uh, the enigmatic smile—that's one of the, that is the selling feature of the Mona Lisa. And the thing about it is that people always question what she was thinking. So then it, it kind of leads you to, to explore yourself and think, oh, well, was she feeling this? Was she feeling this? Why did she have that smile? What was she thinking? And it's the emotional side that it brings out on you again. And the philo- philosophical side as well, because philo- philosophy, uh, philosophy tends to get attached to art quite quite regularly. Mm-hmm. That, you know, people, every, again, everyone having different views on it, uh, that, that's no exception. Um it's it's interesting to note as well that if, if, if we're talking about art from a classical sense, especially like the great masters, a lot of them weren't considered great artists when they were alive. Mm. Yeah, mm. that's true. It was only when they died, and again, retrospectively, people look back at the work, which was worth nothing when they were alive. They couldn't sell them for food. Yeah. Um, was it Van, Van, Go- Van Gogh sold two pictures and one to his, was to his brother, wasn't it? Yeah. In his yeah. lifetime. Yeah. And There's a lot of artists like that. <clears throat> I do remember a lot of these. I know a lot of them are very prolific, but a lot of these famous artists haven't actually produced that much either. We're getting too far away from games now, though, I think. <laughs> we are, uh, we keep saying. talking well, about... I you know, it's very we, related, but... When we, <laughs> we started to talk about... Nice. Thanks. When we started to talk about... Um, <laughs> talk that about Braid. <laughs> There's been a bit of um, performance art there. When we talked about braids, the the I, it almost feels like the the whole indie revolution that we're current kind of in the middle of at the moment, so even possibly approaching the end of, um, feels like a good a good place for people to explore artistic things within games because it's going back to individuals or small groups of people in the bedrooms mm. being able to do whatever the hell they like without worrying about w- will it sell. And so you're getting a lot more expression in games, and that's spilling through into some of the more esoteric titles that you're getting, like maybe not triple A titles, but certainly big titles again, like um, things such as Journey. And there are, you can look through this, this Steam catalog, or you can look through um, Xbox Live or whatever, and you can see there are, there are a lot of games that are very much kind of expressionist games. Well, I'm, looking at, um, I'm looking at Limbo right now. Uh, I've yeah. got a few indie games mm. in the list. Uh, I played Limbo. I didn't enjoy the gameplay at all. I, I got a few levels in, and I think it was just after the spider bit, which everyone goes on about. Um, not very far, but I didn't enjoy the game itself, but I can appreciate the look of it. But mm. does that make the game art? The game itself art, or does that make the art style artistic? I, I, well, I think the game was... The, the, the whole purpose of the game was to elicit that response. The kind of spider thing in it is animation it's not so much art but that still makes you kind of oh god that's a that's still it's still uh, again animation is art man. yeah if it we... is yeah of course it is. i'm not saying it isn't but you're, you're you did, saying you just it's... said animation isn't art you actually no, just said uh, yeah, those words no well yeah because i was saying what you what i thought you were saying which was that the the the, the design of the game is art but the animation isn't where where do you draw no, no, the line no 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 because all of the a game is is much more than just the visuals it is limbo wouldn't I mean Limbo wasn't particularly popular in terms of indie games. I know it's 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 had a lot of press, but it wasn't as popular as some of the other ones. Um, but it's that it looks nice, it looks beautiful, but the whole game itself, if you take the the fact that you you can run around and control the character, the fact that it's got a little bit of a story in it, I'm sure it's got quite a de- in-depth story but I didn't give it that much of a chance or, or the fact that you've got these encounters in it, it it's the whole thing is an art but the the way it looks is if we take the way that it looks away the game isn't art anymore or is it because we, well, may, we may consider well, about, the skill involved in making the game art what about games like Thomas was alone or um 
or the Stanley Parable. Well, I did think Especially about... Especially Thomas alone, because that really doesn't have an artistic style as much as it. Yeah. It's just very minimal in order to get the point across. It, it's got a certain style to it. It's got... It it's does, got... but it's, that's not, it's not a beautiful game, is it? It's a very minimalist game. No, you but can't the... appreciate the beauty from a minimal point of view, but the whole point of that game is the the story and the emotion that attaches to nondescript objects. So what about the um, the voice acting in that, which is the, arguably the, the best part of the game? Is that art? Well, act, <laughs> well I think the whole game's art. <clears throat> acting, theatre, performance, yes. Of course mm. it is. <laughs> so difficult. See, stylizing something in an artistic way doesn't make it art. But, contrary to what Lou said, things don't have to be beautiful to be art. Look at um, Scream. That isn't exactly. by any measure beautiful. No, but it does elicit a response, so I guess yeah. it's the wrong... It, that's one kind of response you get from Again, art. It it's, might be horror, like uh, uh, Bosch's painting. Yeah. I mean, for me, I, I keep coming back to the same point, and that's just uh, eliciting an emotion. I think that's My too wife general. elicits uh, an emotion from me, though. No, but it's, it's, it's Go something... Go downstairs and call it artistic. <laughs> You'll impress her at the very least. She could, she could be watching this now. Darling, I think you're beautiful, but you're not art. I'm sorry. It's, even though you elicit emotions from me, it it's so difficult to define this. You, you... That depends on whether you're a creationist or not, doesn't it? <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah, you could say the human body's art, couldn't you? Oh, my God. Everything. Know, Chris, <clears throat> Chris the, the thing is, you're, you're quick to point out what you think isn't art, but you're, you're really struggling to point out what is art. Yeah? Well, so maybe we need a process is, of elimination. Art is what is defined to me as art, and I'm thinking classical art, you know, paintings, um, things you that I know. You don't really appreciate that. Yeah, you don't I don't appreciate them, them, but I know that they're art. Yeah, but you're saying they're art just because so that the public consensus says they're art. What do you class as art? What... What if if you were to have a piece of art on display in your house? What would it be? Some that you enjoyed, some that you liked and you chose personally. <laughs> Looking around these blank walls. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a few bits on the walls, but none of it's art. I mean, I've got nice arty pictures of my cats uh, on a calendar. Um, up there, the back. That's a pin board. There's a calendar up there. Um, There's a back of Skyrim there. That that's sort of art. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it, it is art. I guess you get lost, Chris. It is art, but it's functional as well, so that, I don't know. I don't know. If I had to class anything as art, I would class games as art, because they're the things I enjoy the most in the world. This is the, I think uh, what you said and what Steve said about that is kind of interesting and something I wanted to move on to rather than just endlessly arguing about what's art and what's not, because we've kind of done that now. But it's about what games as art and how games have had to be legitimised as an art form. Because Steve said, you know, just because you've been you've been brought up and you've absorbed the idea that Renaissance paintings are art, that you know the Sistine Chapel is art, all these classical things that have been told as art because they've been around for hundreds of years, yes, they have the weight of history on their side. Games have had to fight as a medium to be called an art form, yeah. and that's an interesting kind of story in and of itself. And the way that the gaming community has, you know, stood up to that task and also been very not equal to that task in other measures is, is also quite interesting to me. So um, the fact that it's an, it's it's not a traditionally known art form does not in any way like keep it out from being put into the same realms as a Renaissance painting or anything else. It's like like we've said, it's about what it means to you. If you get more of a, of a reaction and a feeling and uh, you, want, you want the games more than you want to go look at the Mona Lisa, then of course to you, they are more valid as a form yeah. of art than the Mona Lisa is. Yeah, I, I think completely every new, agree. I think every new that, me sorry. Oh, sorry, go on. <coughs> I was going to say every new medium has to fight to be recognised as art, art yeah. form. Yep. I think we should move this conversation on to if 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 we all agree that art is something that invokes an emotion in you yourself, it doesn't have to be classically defined as art. It's something that you interpret, something you enjoy looking at, appreciate, and and something that gives you an emotional response. What games have done that for you? Well, I've got a list in the documents, so I'll let you guys go first. Ah, we are just going to talk about Metal Gear Solid. No, I'm not. <laughs> I didn't put that in. Sam put that in. Who put, I did, but I don't have to talk about it. I just put who it put in. Uh, Papers, Please in? I did. All the indie stuff at the bottom. That's uh, everything I put in. I haven't played that, but I've seen a lot about it. No, I've played it. 
Papers, uh, papers, please. Um, I would say. I'm gonna say, all right. I'm gonna to have to. I'm gonna to have to stop thinking too hard, and I'm gonna to have to say yes. I think games are art. End of right, and and I'm gonna to have Woo! to talk about games as art because otherwise I'm gonna be here all day. We're well, um, just gonna go around in circles. I think. I think to me, um, if if I class a game as art, it has to kind of evoke some kind of, uh, as you said, emotional response from me. But it also has to have some kind of aesthetically pleasing uh, thing going on with it. It has to, even if it's uh, eight bit art, you know, eight bit pixel art, or or it could be the the latest um, physically based shader stuff. You know, it, it, as long as it looks pretty to me, then that I would consider an arty game. Um, anyway, papers please. It's it's an eight bit like kind of old pixel style, but in terms of the way that it's implemented, the gameplay feels quite interesting and arty because it's experimental, because it does something that's a bit outside the boundaries of like normal gameplay. Um refusing people visa uh, work visas to enter the country on you. Yeah, yeah, I'm not yeah, saying I, played I'm not... It, but I, I, I didn't play it a massive amount of time. I... It was uh, it was addictive in a slightly concerning way. That essentially you, <clears throat> I was in, I was playing a game that was doing someone's job. Yeah. yeah, I mean the whole point of the game is to make you feel um, like conflicted, isn't it, about yeah, whether you let someone through? Supposed to feel guilty through. about that. So I suppose from the emotional response point of view, it does elicit an emotion, but its sole purpose is to elicit uh, like to elicit an emotion. That's what the purpose is. So well, it's also to have fun as well playing it. Oh, I, I didn't really have fun. I you, just really you, you... felt that like couldn't stop playing it. Because it was people that were trying to get in, and you know, oh, my daughter needs her medicine. I'm like, oh, I'll fucking go and give her it. <laughs> <laughs> but that, I think the point I was trying to make is, is that I was quite looking at it and looking at the intentions of the the author of the game. They intended it to be a, a, a political, you know, kind of satire. Is that the right word? Satire is kind of. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's it's commentary. Meant, yeah, it? it's a, yeah, it's a political yeah. commentary, isn't it? On on Soviet, you know, yeah, that kind of thing. Um, but he, there's something about the style as well that makes me, I, I like it. I like it. I mean, I didn't play the game for too long. I'll be honest. I played it for a few hours. Um, died once. Lost all my family. All died, <laughs> died. cold or something. Right. Um, I didn't get very far the first time I played it, but I didn't really get what was going on. I didn't realize how it worked properly. Um, well, I could have said I couldn't be asked to, to read everything and make sure I was checking every bloody page of the visa. Oh, God. But then it just gets a bit too much. But I don't know, that's why I consider it art, because it it's visually pleasing to me, and I got a bit of enjoyment from it. I don't know. I, I, and it's a bit different, and it's trying something new. And I suppose art is also experimentation to me. It's also trying to get, you know, move humanity onwards a little bit, I suppose. That doesn't mean that is what the definition of art is. I'm just saying that's what I why I consider this particular game art. Albert Einstein um, once said uh, there are, uh, there's 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 two things that are needed uh, for man to like propagate to like proliferate to be successful. That's science and art. He said that the two things are needed by humanity. You need, obviously, to be able to progress yourself, you need to be able to progress technology to the point where you can cure diseases, you can solve problems, but you also need to, to nurture the emotional side of the human mind. Right brain, left brain. Exactly. Well, by the classical definition, then I don't need art. I'm outside of that. But if I consider games, I don't say I, I need entertainment of some description. Is yeah, all so entertainment art. art? Stop it. Loosely, loosely termed, yeah. So, yeah, okay, I agree with that then, if that's the case. I think I just find it really difficult to even define it, because I, I, I said I, I'm just going off what other people tell me, because I don't think I'm into art. I don't think I enjoy it. That's because you've hey, been no. brought up with the people telling you what is art and what isn't. Hmm. But it doesn't and bother me. I don't me. think that's right, it, because art's up, it, what we said at the beginning, it's in the eye of the beholder. But I, I can't, if I don't... Can, I don't feel like I have an opinion on it, or too strong an opinion on it, because I don't really know how to define art. I don't know. <laughs> You're not an art person, are you, Chris? No. You like everything literal. You like potatoes. No. Uh, yeah. 
Gnocchi. Just I potatoes. Like gnocchi. Just plain potatoes. I've just eaten raw. And now I need potato. Yum, yum. It's fine for me. Just, just potatoes. If you had a can of tomato, uh, Campbell's tomato soup, and then it can be hard. <laughs> Apparently so. Yeah. yeah. Um. Well then, who else has got a game? Else go. Uh, yeah, there's. <laughs> I was going to say Shadow of the Colossus. I mean, I've not really played the game, but it is like Sh Shadow of the Colossus is one of those games that constantly gets referred to as art. It's like it, everything about that game is, is meant to be in some way artistic. I can kind of get that because it looks nice. It's pleasurable to play, and it makes you feel like a bastard. Yeah. Yeah. You get you actually get a little bit of two different things because it is it feels nice to play, so you get that sort of satisfaction and fun, mm. but also a sense of guilt and foreboding and 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 just like unutterable sadness, just like yeah. riding your horse out in this bleak, bleak but yet beautiful wasteland to go and murder these seemingly innocent creatures that have done nothing to mm. you. <laughs> um, and that consistently gets gets like like I say it's consistently gets classified as art, and is it almost the game is doing something different to the norm and that makes it that swings it into the art group because it's not you're not just like some hero who's trying to kill the bad guy there's something more going on and even though the gameplay is essentially the same you are a hero killing bad guys you're not really the hero and you're not really the bad guys and suddenly that makes it art because it's because it's playing with those those established kind of yeah and it, doing it, things it throws a few things together in a, in a way that other games don't do it so i guess in that, yeah the fact that it, it's it's unique makes it seem more artistic i suppose because it's it's something that stands out rather than just being another product it's not mm. it's not just because you don't you've got games as products it's just this is a product you get to the end and you win and then you buy the sequel that this is like a it is like an expression of something that the people that made it had a something they wanted to say now obviously we said that your interpretation is is your own but it was made in a different mindset, I think, than a lot of other games. It's and quite that ambiguous, that shows... wasn't it? I mean, the actual game doesn't... I don't, it doesn't overtly try to make you feel like a bastard, so it feels like... It's, it's a creeping the... feeling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Feeling. That's uh, what you said there, well, what, uh, what both you and Sam said, just kind of made me think something. That's the potential of computer games for art, because unlike other mediums, they've got the potential to really kind of play on your emotions, because... Uh, like Shadow of the Colossus, it can make you, f it can lead you on, so you continue following the story or doing what you're doing in the belief that you know you're accomplishing something or doing something right, and then turn it around so that you realise that all your actions and they are your actions. You're not watching someone or reading a dialogue. Your actions have subsequently been of uh, a conflicting emotion that that you were building up to, and there's no other medium that can do that. But they're not True. your actions. They are your actions, yeah, because yeah. You, you can turn the you game off. You can turn off. the game off. <clears throat> okay, yes, okay, you can turn the game off, but most games are linear and get to a point. Yeah, but, but most paintings are crap. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's, uh, there's, there's, a couple, there's a couple of games, I can count them on one hand, that have also given you that same experience of you doing something in the game which you could stop doing, or you don't... They make you question just doing the things, that the objectives that the game gives you. Yeah. Uh, one is Bioshock, the first one, mm. as we all know, a man chooses, a slave obeys. Uh, if anybody's not played that, I probably shouldn't say any more than that, otherwise it's a massive spoiler. And also, um, I've completed it now, because I was talking about it ages ago, Spec Ops The Line had a, that was a huge part. When I got to the end of that game, there was the whole thing about the, th the choices that you've made in the game, and the way that you, you... The certain choices that you can make in the game and certain ones that you can't, but either way, you push yourself through the narrative and then have to live with the consequences at the end, and it's as a sort of similar effect to Shadow of the Colossus, where you feel like the bad guy, mm. um, like the same uh, yeah. when you're kind of doing Bioshock at a certain point, you feel like you're the bad guy in a way, and you're just like, it, I think you've done those unique. things, you've and you've enjoyed yeah. killing those people and doing that violence, it's and very then you feel bad about it. It's very different from storytelling, isn't it? And it's, it's massively basically, different. It's it's not it's not telling you a story that you feel sad for the protagonist or the antagonist or whatever. It's it's a game where you are the person doing those actions, and the game is playing with that. It's it's a very it's very different when you think about it. it, it there, there isn't really that 
much of a story to um, Shadow of the Colossus, if any story, no, really. Very minimal. You, but, but it, it, it you make the that story because, yourself. Because you're making the story, yeah? Because yeah. you're participating in it, and, and it, it is, it's on you. If there was a story, it wouldn't really be on you. It'd be like, all oh, right, the game was telling this story in the first place. But because it's minimal, and because it doesn't tell you any of that, because it doesn't prescribe the story, it's all on you. You were the one who did it. Uh, that's quite a cool concept and and that is it, that has to be art would you yeah. could you Surely. class would you class uh design as art not necessarily game design but any kind of other design there is there is an argument well, there's, there's an argument isn't it that there's this design is to to um sell a product or to to um to make something more palatable as a product whereas art is for the sake of the beauty itself or the, not the beauty but the, for the sake of the how you feel about the thing yeah, so the product those... itself would be art, but the marketing material would be design, maybe something like that. But yes. that art does not exist in, in, in an idyllic vacuum. It's always tied into the economy that it's created in. Mm. All artists have to make a living. You know what I mean? Unless they do it purely as a side project to their job and make no money for it whatsoever, uh, which is which, is, which people do. You know, most of the artists that we've talked about, it's been something that they've done for a job that they've been paid to do as well. So mm. commercialism and art have always gone hand in hand. The same way that the, the great artists were commissioned back in the day by the Christian church to do things that they wanted to do. And they, you know, the Fistine Chapel was commissioned by, you know, the church and so on and so forth. So they've always gone hand in hand one way or another. Is that because so the the technical skill that's involved in art um, is something that isn't very easily learned and you have to put a lot of time into? So a great artist... Unless obviously they were born with just a great natural skill, which some artists are, you know, like some Mozart and what have you. Um, but because this skill's got to be learned and honed, then you, you've, you've got to do it full time. Well, I would consider myself an artist in terms of my professional job then, because I have to hone and develop my skills until I get it to I, a point where I, I can design I a system. I don't think it can because then you can class me as an artist and I'm not... If yeah, someone else appreciates that my database design is the best database design they've ever seen in their life and they, they love the fact that my indexes are all perfect and all of my all of my constraints are, are right and no one else has ever done that before, then surely that could be considered art then. No, I because if I develop I a new way of... Uh, you know, a, a new internal combustion system that's massively more efficient, that's not art, that's just doing your job efficiently yeah i think that when, when you're doing stuff like that that's stuff that really should be not seen people shouldn't have to think about the fact that you've designed a really good database it should just work and they should it should just be fast and work and not be any problems with it and that's the difference is that when you're kind of doing those kind of engineering jobs or programming or whatever you're solving problems to make it so that people don't encounter problems mm. you're not solving that problems so that people can appreciate those problems that you've solved or the way that you solve the problems. It's a different thing entirely. I there is, don't there is some crossover. think that they are. I think that, that, I think that Chris is right. You can, and, uh, you, can apply the, you can apply an artistic value to those kind of things. If, if, it's, if someone appreciates it in a certain manner, even if it is just for its efficiency and it's impressive or I don't know, whatever, it still falls into sort of that category. It's not, you know, it isn't the Mona Lisa. It's something different. But I I wouldn't I wouldn't be impressed if a, a you know if a, an artist or a great artist was considered in higher regard than than the best database designer in the world. Because it, I'm it's, sure by some people they are. Yeah, no, but you think by some people they're not. Well, that's what I'm saying. Is it, again, it's a subjective thing, isn't it? It's the fact that there may be oh, there's a, the, I, the, there was an example uh, a few weeks back a, a data, in fact about databases <laughs> where someone at work admired something I did, and I was like, that's nice. It's yeah. nice to get that, but I didn't do it to create yeah, it's professional uh, admiration. Though that's not art. Why yeah, is it the same thing? I, no. I, Right, the majority, why, why, why would you why would you label ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the people that are going to encounter your work are not going to know it's there? Exactly. The same as ninety nine point yeah. nine 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 percent of people who encounter my work will not know it's there. Does that mean does that mean that that painting that's in the in my attic that no one's ever seen underneath the floorboards or whatever uh, that will get found in a hundred years time, or maybe tomorrow? Now actually, it's no, not I know art it's there. until it gets uh, found. So yeah, so it's not. It's like it does. A, it does a tree make a sound if it falls in the forest and no one's there to hear it. You know, 
it's it's again this is where the philosophy starts coming into it it's it is, it is but i think i think we're, we're kind of straying off what <laughs> i don't i don't think that this is classed as art this is like you know the foundations of a building might be very beautifully designed but they're under the building where you can't see them and they just make the building stand up and the building's less likely to fall over than another building with crappier foundations that's not art and as good as it is and as well made as it is it's there to serve a purpose and that purpose I, is I, to not be seen I would I hold I we were talking about people holding things holding things in regard and it's subjective I hold a, an awesome technical architect in much higher regard than I ever would um, Leonardo, well, not Leonardo da Vinci because he was an inventor as well, but um, Picasso. But that's, because, but th that's because you've already said that you don't really in appreciate classical art. But then you, then I went on to say that that's what I consider art because that is what I've been told is art. But I don't appreciate it. So then Steve said, if you, if you can, if uh, art is what you consider art, I, it, yeah, if, if it's subjective, I'm allowed that opinion. You can't tell yeah, me that it's it, invalid. Yeah, true. But the question that you posed to us was, because I do this, do you think that I should be considered an artist? And I said no. Well, it, in the same respect that I shouldn't be considered an artist. Or me. Or Lou. Well, well, you are an artist, though, Lou. Yeah. Well, I do artistic things, but what I do for a living is not artistic. I design. Well, I create no, websites. But you have done artistic things for a living before. When you, I have. When, when you when you worked for me, you were creating websites and you were creating very nice looking I websites. I would class that as design, not so much as yeah. art, though. But the, what, that's look, design. That was, was to do art to serve a purpose. There was and one particular. The there was one particular client, and obviously, do not mention their name, uh, that we did a number of designs for. Some Vagisil. of them were. Sorry. Vagisil. It was Vagisil, yes. Uh, other <laughs> vag vagina pastes are available. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so but we had we had one particular client that was very fussy about what they wanted, and they didn't actually actually tell us what they wanted. So Lou came up with a number of different designs, but one or two of them were pieces of art in my eyes. They looked beautiful. Maybe not now, you know, by your standards today, but back then we were. It was it, it looked very nice, and we were also given those kind of comments from other people. That's I know, more of an I know art who piece you're on than about, a website. I do still have those things, but I, I still would not class them as art. I would class them as good pieces of design, but not as art. And I think there is a distinction to be drawn here. And we, we've had this conversation at work about whether branding is art. And it can cross over. You know, you get this, the, the Coca-Cola logo, which now is regarded by many as a piece of art. But it's not. It's a, it's a logo that someone was paid $30 for or something. And so, I don't really, I don't, why is it different if, if somebody has the emotional connection to that uh, and wants it on a t-shirt or a picture of it on their wall, then why the hell isn't it art? I really don't see what the difference is. The, we're talking about the intentionality behind the person that made it. We just said that didn't matter. We just said that didn't matter. Wood Potato Powers just kind of went back to what we said originally. If we're going to start getting this pedantic and finicky about it, everything's art. Yeah. Because someone's going to appreciate everything. That's what I, I said. I'm, I'm just being an, I'm just being really anal with that. I mean, I wouldn't consider my work art personally, but it, yeah. you could consider it art. Yeah, so there might be one person in the world who's got no life, never been outside and <laughs> looks at your website. Oh, look at that. If I if I go on uh, if I go on a, a blog somewhere and someone's put a design on there for something that I'm particularly interested in, I I wouldn't, but I might be the kind of person to print it out and put it on my wall. You know, I don't know. <laughs> just a daft, weird just, all. daft You're example, but there are, weird. there are people that like do that Bender kind of thing. getting off to circuit diagrams. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, anyway. Well, this, uh, what were we talking about before Corpse, we got to that Cor subject? Oh, Corpse has just, put, um, uh, uh, has just said, um, are you talking art as in visual? We're not going to answer that. Go and watch this on YouTube earlier because we've been talking about art since the very beginning and not yeah, much like about games. An hour and a quarter, so <laughs> so, yeah. I, I tell you what, let's let's relax this a little bit because because we, yeah. we we really are getting too het up on what is art and our games art. Let's accept that games are art. Let's move on and let's actually talk about games that we consider art as we started to do a minute ago. Yeah. So who's who's gone? Uh, uh, Lou and Chris have gone so far, haven't they? I think on that. Yeah. 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 Steve, do you want to go next then? Um, I'm still thinking, so I'll let you jump in if you've got something out of mind, Sam. Uh, let me have a look at the, put on the list something that I want to talk about. Um, we've already talked about Shadow of the Colossus, although I do agree on that one. Yeah, someone has highlighted it. Yeah, Okami. Or Okami, as it says on Okami. the title screen. When you start I've never, I still haven't played that. 
I it's, haven't uh, yet, and that, I really want to. That is a game that definitely falls into the. It's very much designed to be visually appealing as a, as a piece of art, as and it takes its its design style. I don't know what the style is called. I probably should have researched it before we started this, but it's it's those uh, those traditional old Japanese paintings. You yeah. know, like the one where you see the, the very famous one of the wave. There's that very sort of certain line style that they have and the colours that they use. The whole game is like that. It's basically cell shading, but a unique type of cell shading uh, art style for the whole uh... game aesthetic. Um, but it has it has a lot of other feelings that it evokes as well. I mean, it's basically, I've said before, it's the best Zelda game that Nintendo never made. Yeah. If I was going to say what's my favourite Zelda game, it probably would actually be Akavi in a weird way because it kind of does what Zelda does better than most Zelda games have ever done it. Um, and it also has that a really nice central theme of it is that you're essentially a god who runs around the world making it come back to life and that's that, incre- that evokes an incredibly strong positive with, feeling with a paintbrush no less as well which is a yeah i can't really say that that ties it into being artistic more than those <laughs> stuff, but you actually use an artistic tool in order to play the game kind of you know you use a controller yeah. to do it but it's still a tool which is the main thing that i would kind of but it's still a mechanism you know it, and it's not it's not as, it's not got the sort of moral uh ambiguity or complexity or something like papers please it's not it's not about that it, it's very much a game about about joyful enjoyment and and making the world better and, and that's the really valid emotion as well yeah mm. uh, and i love it i love that game i've actually recently downloaded the hd version of it and i'm thoroughly enjoying playing through it again for what, like the seventh time, time. Oh, oh, yes, three. Corpse is mentioning really interesting. I thought it was only available on, on Nintendo. Um, no, the, the, se- the sequel was. Oh. It, weirdly, it was a PS2 exclusive. Then it wasn't, and then they made the sequel on the Wii. Sorry. Sorry, I just say Corpse says something really interesting in the chat, which is the Walking Dead adventure game or any game with cutscenes. Now, what do we think about cutscenes? Because same... you've got cutscenes and they go into machinima and things like that. And Comes... that's getting very mm. close to movie and um, and, you know, Animation, but are all movies? Uh, I don't think they are. So we're going back yeah. around the same circle yeah. again. Well, no, but I'm talking about cutscenes specifically. Wow, yeah, that's know? the same thing as a movie. It's no different. Yeah. It's, it's no different because you have no control over a cutscene. It's it is a movie. It's just a mini movie in a game. Okay, fair enough. Is 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 making a mission of a video an emergent gameplay mechanic? <laughs> yes. <laughs> is making Red versus Blue emergent gameplay? Yes. <laughs> This is another topic from last week. Just chuck that in there. Um, I'm going to uh, shot an old one in here. I'm going to say another world. Ooh, yes. Why? Ooh, definitely, yeah. Yeah. Why? Why yeah. not? Have you Every seen it? aspect of it, the sound, the visuals, the just the the, the story that it put you in. Now, now, as a child, which I was a child when I first played it, I found that it was it, it was a, an emotional roller coaster because there was. I don't know, it was so, um, that's what I'm looking for, um, immersive at the time. Mm-hmm. And the the styling of it, and the, there was no dialogue in the whole thing. There is, from, isn't there? Isn't that, yeah, that, that weird guy. <laughs> yeah. Well, but again, um, you, you, you kind of felt for him, him because he kind of sacrifices himself for you in the game to allow you to escape. Sorry if I've ruined that for anyone, by the way. I, I have right? played is, it years ago. Yeah. Is it alright at the end of the game, though? Um, it's kind of... I, I don't think you actually find out. No, no, no you're not. No. Yeah, you go into the Colosseum at, at the end, and he he then sacrifices himself so you've got a chance to escape before the missiles coming at you. Oh. Yeah. Who, uh, nice rumor. But why, um, why specifically? Why, why did you choose that? Because to me, I mean, back in the day, it looked pretty impressive because it was stylized but the the visual aspect of it isn't that I chose that because I look back at it now and I'm looking at a picture of it now and I still think that's beautiful mm. yeah exactly and it still it evokes is. the same emotions in me I love the world that they've created there I, I love the rock formations you know the way the stalactites hang down the the big beasty black creature that runs around the whole thing Extending on from there, I'm going to bang in Shadow of the Beast too as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Shadow of the Beast. I heard. I know that that name sounds familiar. Shadow of the Beast was an epic game. 
if you got not great, not a great that, game though, is not, it? Not, not a great, great game, but it it really set the scene. It was uh, it was well again. It just it evoked quite a lot of emotions to me from the uh, from the opening cutscene as well. I know we've just discussed cutscenes, the music, um, and it was a very 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 bleak story. As was the first Shadow of the Beast, actually. Interesting art tie-in, as well as the cover for the original Shadow of the Beast. I don't know if two or three or anything were done by him, but uh, Roger Dean did the cover, a uh, well-recognised artist. Um, he designed all of the kind of backgrounds and stuff for it as well, I believe. I love those kind of those big spires of rocks. Mm. Is, Sh- is Shadow of the Beast the, the one where you can turn into a number of different animals, like a werewolf and a... No, that's all the beast. That's all the yeah, beast, all yeah. Beast. I'm that's looking. Creepy. I'm looking at Shadow of the Beast now, and I hope, hopefully, I've got the right video on. But Shadow of the Beast Two, Amiga. Shit. That looks like it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, it's up the stream. Yes, that Shadow of the Beast. So the actual game itself uh, doesn't look all that great, but if you watch the intro, I think actually Shadow of the Beast One looks better than the second one. Yeah. Um, is, yeah. But the music's good, and just it was a really, really bleak story. Um, and there's uh, the, there's a lot of bits in it, like um, it depends what's going to come up or not. But uh, there's like I don't know, the representations of what and they weren't humans because obviously they're massive, but just the positions that they're in there. Do you know? Um, oh, I forget what it's called now. What's that um, that sculpture where the guys stood with the Atlas? Well, yeah. Um, uh, Atlas, there's a, a a person like that in its way. He's pushing this huge block, and he's just going ever so slowly, like, grunting away, and that. And it just, I'm, they're the things that pop back in my head when I think about it, and the emotions pop back into my head as well. When but I'm, this is nostalgia, though, isn't it? Surely this isn't. Not really, because it was it was it was really affecting at the time. I remember seeing the intro to Shadow of the Beast two and being shit, disturbed disturbed by it. Yeah, it was scary. And whether it's because I'd never seen that in a game before or. And so that does kind of in turn become nostalgia or whether it was just because it was so scary and affected. I think a lot of Amiga games had that weird sort of bleakness to them. Yeah, like kind of grown up, uncomfortable, disturbing nature to them. And that that is a valid um, artistic uh, kind of response, really, isn't it? Again, going back to kind of Hieronymus Hieronymus Bosch paintings and things like that or... Uh, Picasso stuff like Guernica and things are kind of slightly horror and disturbing I'm a big fan of um, surrealist art dreamlike stuff um, oh, and, like um, uh, Escher and uh, Dali. Um, yeah Escher, uh, Dal. Dali and um, my favourite is a, uh, a Polish guy called Jacek Jurka um, and a lot of games around this, that kind of 80s had a similar kind of feel to them. And the, the, because the, the graphics were kind of necessarily simplistic, they almost fit into that surrealist look. Like things weren't quite laid out in perspective and stuff like that. Hmm. So there's a lot of games from back then that kind of do elicit that same response I get from looking at pieces of, uh, of surrealist art. I'm just watching the intro on my own now. What's Shadow of the Beast 2? Well, I think I need to see the Hear the Sound. Yeah, you, you need do. to hear the sound. Um, you're, you're pulling a very weird face, though. While you were talking, well, I'm, I'm not sure I agree with. I, I don't know. I, I can't <laughs> see. I can't see art in that. Yeah, uh, you can't, but I can. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I can see art in Green Hill Zone on Sonic for the Mega Drive. Hmm. I think it's just appreciation with me. I, I, I'm never yeah, going to call art any, is. It's but I'm never going to call anything art ever again because I don't think the term actually exists. I, I don't believe that art. Ex- I do not believe in art. Chris is going around <laughs> scribbling all of your dictionaries now. Yeah, but not I mean, art. I've got loads of nostalgic games that I love the look of and I love the feeling of and and that, but I'd never consider them art. I mean, Monkey Island. I, you know, I loved it. I love the look of it. I love the way that it plays. I love the 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 comedy in it i love that you know I, I, th- I think the point i was trying to make is that if, if i think of another world or shadow of the beast it takes me back to a specific time when i was a kid and a very specific emotion or a set of emotions mm. so it's it's the same way that if, if if you listen to an album it takes you to a place or you, or you look at a certain picture and it puts you in a place them games put me in a place mm. and i think that's something that's key to art 
Yeah, I is, that, is that is that an atmosphere thing? Is it the games that are atmospheric? Of uh... no, because like Dead Space is atmospheric. But I so when some, that. when someone goes to see the Mona Lisa, then how does anybody in this day and age get put in some kind of nostalgic trance or whatever? You know what what you're saying is you, it it takes you somewhere. It, it makes you feel something. If, it evokes. If, have something. you been to an art gallery? I've been to not not any. Oh no, I have been to one or two big ones. Um, if, if, I if actually you go get to a big art gallery in front of the pictures, what you'll find is a lot of chairs and people just literally go and sit there and just stare at them. I just haven't been to them. an art gallery then if that is the case because blatantly not. Not one uh, that I've paid any attention to anyway. It's it, it's a place where you're expected to be quiet or quiet-ish and you're just supposed to you know, respect them and just sit there and look at it. Well, I, I like doing that in museums. I like going to see artifacts and um, I like going to see old old castles and you know, going on walks and things like that, and they all evoke emotions and take me to places. But we already said that uh, we're going back into. I'm going back into it. I'm sorry. I'm. Everything can be art. Remember, everything, <laughs> everything, and nothing yeah. is art. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's uh, like on a kind of quantum. So once you kind of look at art, it disappears. <laughs> or oh, it's only art <laughs> for that. Is art? No, <laughs> yeah. He's shorting his ass. <laughs> right. Um, Back to me. I haven't. I haven't done one for a while. chamber on your list, Chris. I would. That was the one I was going to pick. Wow. Um, yes, antechamber. Only because, again, the art style in it, the 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 fact that it looks very pretty and it it does even evoke emotions in you. Um, even though it's a you know relatively complex puzzle game. It challenges preconceptions, doesn't it? It challenges your idea of what three D space is. Everything that I keep going, way. everything that I keep going back to, and considering a, an arty game, are ones that push the boundaries and do things differently all the time. And I think maybe that's why some of these artists have had recognition over the years, maybe because they've been different at that time. I think that's that's something that I mentioned earlier, which is that things that uh, do something different, so things that break the kind of the, the, the mold. Break the mold, yeah. Yeah, they tend to be picked up as artistic because they're trying something new. They're trying something a bit different and a bit daring. I mean, it's like uh, what I mentioned, Dali. Uh, when he first started painting, I mean, I went to an exhibition to see Dali as well. Obviously, his, his most fair, famous words are the ones where he's got the melting clocks and yeah, you know, the, the elephants, elephants that are on massive long thingies. Yeah. Now, people since then have recreated his work in a myriad of different forms. That isn't art because that's just copying off what someone else has done. His original kind of break in the mold. But it is art. It's still art. Let's not get into that again. His yeah. <laughs> it's just it, copying. I think I think, I think I think it's always appreciated when someone does something original. That's why yeah. you know the, the the you know the band that gets their own sound and you go ah oh, you know that's really unique and you respond to that more than just the, the generic sort of let's just go with the mold of what's popular at the moment bands. Mm. For example, the same way that like innovative filmmaking, things like Citizen Kane, stand out because of how innovative it was for its time. It's like become you know held as a really great piece of cinema. So it's you know people that innovate and do new things and make you see things or hear things or experience things in a way that somebody else hasn't done before. It's always going to be at the forefront of, of yeah, what is considered it, to be. The high end of art. And that's kind of one of the drivers behind modern art. I mean, we mentioned before about the messy bed and that type of stuff. That's just people trying to break the mould. They're trying to do something abstract and out there, something different. And sometimes it fails and sometimes it fails. <laughs> it, just, it just fails. <laughs> Again. Sometimes it fails, sometimes it fails a bit more. <clears throat> I'm I'm just I'm actually staring at I've never sat and watched anybody else play Antichamber and it's kind of got me in a bit of a trance because it is very I've, beautiful uh, to watch as you as as people walk around even though you know having played the game I know that this person's mind is going absolutely mental trying to work the puzzles out I've heard people out getting headaches from trying to play it was it was it you Lou uh, No I couldn't play the game because you couldn't rebind the keys All right <laughs> Um I, the, but I mean, I, I really enjoyed the whole experience of that, and it looks nice, and it's got lots of different. It's almost like some areas, in fact, inside. In fact, there are areas in the game where you go into a room, and there are displays, and there are displays of four-dimensional or, or Escher-like uh, 
models and just uh, it can't. It, in fact, I was reading an article on uh, Antichamber a while back, and he was saying that he was experimenting with um, with different uh, different ideas in each of these things, and he just wanted to show them off. You know, he just wanted to show things things that a computer can do. <clears throat> I still don't know how he's implemented it, but it's it's very interesting to me. There's an interesting game in a similar vein called Nysense, I think it's pronounced, um, which you may have seen. It's all in kind of black and white, and it's it's a similar sort of thing, although it's less puzzle oriented and more just trying to kind of set a scene. And it's very interesting to uh, to look at, but it's not as well known as this game. By any means, there's there's another indie game called um, The Bridge, uh, which is uh, it's another puzzle game, but it's all Escher drawings. Basically, you're walking around in Escher drawings, trying to not actual Escher drawings. Oh, it's, it's, it's all it's, isometric, isn't it? <clears throat> um, yeah, I, I, it's yeah, like, I, kind, yeah of kind of pastel colours and stuff. Um, but that I would definitely, definitely, a hundred percent put in the category of art, whether it's a game or not. The way that it, it comes across is very oh, artistic. That's not, that's not the game I was thinking of. That is all like woodcuts, isn't it? That's all kind of black and white. There's another game which has got you know the the famous the waterfall that's feeding itself and the mm. stairs, the pen Penrose staircase. It's got stuff like that in it, and it it's all. It I could can't be the name of it. It could be this one because there's there's that in this. No, I'm I'm, I'm I've googled it, was, it and it's definitely not that. There was that. a game called Echo Chrome that had a lot of that. I remember. Oh ah, yeah, it. I saw that. I never played it, but yeah, I saw it in a PS3 mag, a PS mag a while back, and I wanted yeah. to play that. <clears throat> yeah, but the intention of yeah. um, of the bridge is to basically you rotate the. World. I think I played it on a control pad on my PC, and you rotate the world with your left and right paddles. But there's loads of different mechanisms in the game that do different things. Like you have to use the weird physics and the weird like Euclidean angles and stuff in order to get a key. Monument Valley, the game's called that I'm thinking of. Euclidean which is a very, angles, very beautiful wrong. game. Euclidean, by the way. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, I thought you could be Yeah, I can't say it either. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, Monument Valley is the game I'm thinking of, which is is all kind of isometric Escher style constructions. And you know, I I mm. I want to call that art. I, I definitely then, called this bridge. I, even though the game wasn't that interesting, I did get a bit bored of the puzzles at one point. Um, but I, it looks, it feels like I'm I'm staring at a painting to me. It feels like I'm, uh, I don't know. I, I'm, it feels like I can appreciate <laughs> it as an art piece. Such a know. tough one, this isn't it? I didn't so realise this would be such a difficult topic to, t to to just get your head around. Really, it's a difficult. I thought it would be a difficult topic just because it is famously difficult to get its head around. And computer games have had a hard time with this topic. Um, yeah, it was the like, same when uh, like when movies came out. They had a hard time getting classified. Well, even yep. genres of movies. I mean, it, it, it took so long for sci-fi and fantasy to get recognised by the Academy, for instance. Yeah. True. Well, fantasy still. Uh, Some well, struggles, it, yeah. Parts of it do and parts of it don't. Yeah. Have we already discussed the whole Andy Serkis thing? It's sort of best supporting actor Oscar. I don't thing know. where was it when it was it the year that he did the two towers? Um, I think Chris Cooper won for playing some bloke in a beautiful mind, and it's like, who even remembers that? Whereas the combination of Andy Serkis and yes, the animation team made one of the most memorable characters ever put to film, mm. but he wasn't even nominated. Do you know that kind of thing is a bit? Yeah. But that's that's more mocap, I guess, than, and, and again another subject entirely. But um, yes, yeah, Cinema is... had to fight for it, but I think it's just about putting the document. I think games have had a harder time because they've they have been perceived as a toy for children Toys, for yeah. a very long time. Yeah. Cinema was not a toy. TV was not a toy. It was it was a, a thing, a new thing that was always aimed at adults. Like cinema was for, well, I don't know if it was aimed at adults squarely, but it was aimed at adults as well as children, should we say? Whereas toys were all have been very long time perceived to be something that is aimed squarely at children. They're toys. They're electronic toys. Or well, that is how a lot of people see them. Now the generation that sees them that way are probably kind of on their way out now. Generally. Yeah, they're going to die. Yeah, they they will die, and you know, as we all will. I'm not. Um, 
fortunately or unfortunately, whatever, whoever, depending on the person, right? But uh, they will be gone. But it, yeah, they, that that perception of them as toys is still held by quite a lot of people who just aren't into them. We've mentioned this under a few topics, though, that that games kind of st- they're getting they're being taken more seriously now. But they, they, they've yeah historically had issues uh, and. Quite often, in fact, even now, this week, in fact, I was talking to somebody about old games on Amigas and Commodore 64s and things, and there was a guy who was the sim- similar age to the guy I was talking to, who was sat there going, <laughs> as if as if it was an invalid topic, yet the same guy goes and talks about football to other people, and, you know, it's like, as if it's not as valid as that. But he obviously wouldn't see a game as that. He would... He would Immediately dismiss games as toys. That he's wrong. Yeah, that's he just is ignorance, wrong. isn't it? Because yeah. I, I, I'm the kind of person that would be like, well, football was a game that I played as a kid and grew out of. So, yeah, yeah. you know, I mean, it's just it's totally subjective. There's, there's a game back from 1984 that was released um, called Deus Ex Machina, which was a lot of people would class that as one of the first, if if not the first. Um, art games uh, I'm just reading the Wikipedia article about it here I've actually just bought a book recently which is, uh, talks about it as well what book? it's, um, it's uh, oh, I can't remember it's a speculation uh, like 50 Spectrum games covered but it had like a synchronised soundtrack to go with the game and everything you played the tape during the game and it played uh, voiceovers for the game and stuff but it, it just it was everything about it was very different from the the norm and this was 84 i mean games back then i can't think of anything that could even remotely class itself as artistic in 1984 games wise what um, is it like i don't really know is what's it uh, if um, it's hard to, to describe uh, I, I don't know if there's a youtube video or I'm what show, i haven't I'm played showing it myself all oh, right okay um but it's it's got yeah it's got like um, big stars in it. Back at the time, it had um, John Pertwee and Frankie Howard and stuff like that in it. Um, and there was a remake in two thousand ten that had Christopher Lee in it. <laughs> All right. Um, I I can't. I, I wish I could say more about the game. I've heard a lot about it, but I've never played it. I've never seen it, it played. It, it looks to me like the sound is is a hundred percent required because there's just quite a lot of blank screens at the moment. Yeah. Mm. But, it, but this is another one that just like um, Shadow of the Colossus where a lot of people when they talk about this game will just cla- it classify it as art as the nerve gas and it's just interesting that we're talking about games as art being a relatively recent thing once there's been the ability within computers to to actually there's, there's enough power in the computers to be able to express yourself in whatever way you want but this game was doing it in 84 on a Sinclair Spectrum that it's it's got an actual actual voices in it yeah. On a spectrum. How the hell did they well, do that? So it was actually, you played the tape. So obviously the games came on cassettes and you played oh, the cassette. The analog. Right. Yeah. It looks Whatever. weird. It, I mean, it, it looks like a, a very confusing old game that I would probably put on and then turn off immediately. <laughs> I think that's 99% of all old games, isn't it? No. No, I could still play quite a few old games, but. Looks interesting, anyway. But um, yeah, I'll I'll post post the link in uh, in chat if anyone wants to listen to that later on. I yeah, shall yeah, I shall so be doing. It's worth a mention that one. Like I said, I wish I knew more about it. I would have done my research for the show, but I, I forgot all about this until we were in the middle of the show, really. But <laughs> uh, it is certainly an old, arty game. It's and there's uh, a, there's, a, there's other ones like um, Sentinel. Um, mm. Has anyone played that? I played Sentinel. Don't think so. Um, it's a very weird game where you basically got to absorb trees and boulders to uh, to creep up the landscape to, I... to basically absorb this yeah. sentinel, which is like this evil thing in the middle of the map. Which if it looks at you, it kills you. I remember playing it, and it took it just I just didn't have a clue what was happening. It's very bizarre, but it's it's very beautiful. It's very atmospheric, uh, and the the art style is is um is interesting. Hmm. And again, sounds weird. It is. A, I mean, it's a very strange concept. The absorbing trees and standing on boulders to eventually absorb the enemy, and you can't look at him. If he looks at you, you die. Um, but I think all those interesting mechanics combined with the way it looks. It's a fully 3D game as well, which is very interesting for the time. Um, all like kind of solid shaded 3D. Just uh, another interesting one. I'm, I'm just thinking of games now, which. Uh, 
from the distant past, which all have a feel of someone trying to do something different with games, someone trying to express something with games, and trying to elicit an emotion other than congratulations, you've won the game. You know, a lot of games will rest on the fact that it's just about giving you uh, well gratification from from solving problems. I was going to say you could argue that most adventure games or story, you know, based games have got that kind of intention to tell a story to evoke emotion from you and evoke some kind of evoke some kind of response. They do, but a lot of them never actually reach that. There a lot of them kind of wrap up all of the um the simplistic gameplay in this story, but you don't really follow it, you don't really become part of it. Whereas some games make that the point of the game. It, that uh, sort of leads into an interesting point that I've just remembered. Um and I think it the comedian Dara O'Brien did just done a little routine about this, about computer games, about not being able to get past a certain point in um, a Gears of War game. And he was saying that, like, because he doesn't even equivocally or whatever, he doesn't even doubt. It. He goes, no other form of art requires you to earn your your like seeing the full thing. Like to read a book, all you got to do is be able to read. Now you've got to be able to beat the game to get the full story. In the majority of computer games, you can't. Mm. You can't unless you look. You can look at the video on YouTube, but someone else has had to play through that game to to get there. You have to earn the. The experience of a game. Well, that's you don't have to earn watching a film. All yeah. you've got to do is pay your ticket and sit there. That's and that why makes you more it. emotionally invested as well, I think. Yeah, you, the, the fact that you have to make it happen rather than just let it happen, it, it adds another layer to them as an art form as well. Like it's it's a it's an interactive kind of art form, whereas most other art forms, more or less. You know, books. You've got to use your imagination. Whatever. It's a more passive in that yeah. sense. You just yeah. it, it just washes over you. Whereas in games, you're in the action. You're involved. You're doing stuff. You're making it happen. And that sort of makes it unique as as a medium, as an art form. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And I think the fact that the fact that, that, that a lot of people this is that generational thing. The fact that people of a certain generation just don't get that kind of makes me a little bit sad for them. It's like. Do you not understand that there's a reason that people feel so strongly about this? And it, I know that people feel strongly about a lot of shit, so, you know. But there's a reason that, like, we get this into this stuff and we get so invested in it. It's because it gives you a kind of experience with art and narratives and stories and visuals and music and stuff that you don't get by just passively experiencing it. It's yeah. different when you're in the thick of it. And that's mm. one of the core things that puts games quite high. Because we, we all said... We take games over most of the media a while ago. We, if we really pushed to on a desert island situation where we could keep one thing, most of us said games in that sort of scenario. Not just the in general, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Oxygen. If you, to keep, if you can only keep all your CDs or keep all your games or keep all your films away. Feet. Kind of situation. So that makes them unique it. to me. That it so it's it's makes it's something that should be championed more and something that should be brought up more and it doesn't seem to get talked about that much it's like not, this not is in an the interactive art form not in the you know the public eye generally it's unless there's a scandal games are still considered juvenile for children that you know even though there is a thriving industry behind them now and you know they're becoming more accepted by the mainstream that mainstream is still quite a young mainstream and the people that output most of the uh, media coverage, I suppose, is pr probably a little bit older and probably don't take them as seriously. Well, you, I mean, this we've talked about this before, but every mm. new, every new art form, every new medium has to run the gauntlet of first of all being for kids, and then being affecting kids, and then being a menace to society, and then eventually being accepted. And that's books, that's radio, that's movies, that's TV, that's games. That that's just any new uh, media form. And virtual yeah. reality, virtual reality is set to do the same thing. Yeah, um, although I think there might be a slight difference in that the, there's a lot of it might hit at the right generational point where the people that are sort of our age were probably more willing to embrace it than a lot of thirty odd or twenty late twenties, thirty odd year old people might have embraced games when they first came out. Like the, the people that were possibly the dads buying the games for their buying Mario for their kid might not have been as into the open-mindedness of virtual reality is as we maybe yeah. our generation because yeah, we've grown up with them we see it yeah. as an extension of computer games whereas computer games themselves were a pretty new thing in the 80s mm. or in the 70s so 
slightly. I'm not paying 150 quid for that or whatever, whatever it costs, you know. Not for a toy. You're going to press a couple of buttons and watch a square jump up and down. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. That's bait, but this time you do it and you can see it all around you. Rubbish. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not a square anymore, it's a cube. <laughs> no, it's actually a square now. We've just regressed. Now, now it's Thomas's lawn again. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Minimalist. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I think we, we can we can all agree by the end of this then, the same as we agreed pretty much at the beginning, that games <laughs> art is subjective topic. in general, isn't it? And whether we classify games as art or we don't classify games as art, they are people enjoy it one way or the other, and I think that's what art is, isn't it? We 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 have an an enjoyment factor with it. Um, I don't think we can actually agree on much further than that because we're all we've all got different ideas, and all the way through the show, we've I've I've agreed with Steve, and then I've agreed with Sam, and then I've agreed with Lou, and then I've disagreed with all of you at the same time because it is so personal and so subjective. And as you said, an artist creates his art, and then that art becomes what you interpret it as it's it's no yeah. longer the the, the it's intention. no longer the um uh the, the property of that artist essentially is it <clears throat> no um so i think in summary that that's it we, we've had enough for talking about and it was a terrible subject to start with <laughs> and uh I thought it was a great subject. Yeah, it was a great subject. To be fair, it's good when we can't answer it. I think the last few shows have been a bit uh, a bit more interesting even though we do ramble a little bit sometimes we keep going round in circles and but but it's hard isn't it when you have to define these things um so yes unless anybody else has anything else to say or, or any other games yeah. to mention that they found particularly arty then i think we will uh close the show down no i just think yeah. um after the last two episodes i think the next episode should be about boobs in games just something a bit sillier, you mean? Uh, no, no, it's specifically that... boobs in games. Oh, you mean you're actually serious about just boobs in games? <laughs> <laughs> it might only be a short you know? podcast. Yeah. That can one. I, I was just going to say, can, boobs. Yeah. Can we? Can we just? Can, we, can I just say that that wouldn't be a short conversation? <laughs> It'd probably be the least short conversation, least shortest one. <clears throat> um, so yeah. yes, next next week's uh, topic we've already agreed is going to be about Minesweeper. <laughs> Do what? Minesweeper. Minesweeper. Again, ah, as, as we I keep promising. I thought we were doing Spider Solitaire. Uh, no, I, I don't even know how to play that. What? I totally don't. It confuses me. Chris, that, that Chris doesn't play with himself. I do. I play Solitaire. It's an awesome game, but Spider Solitaire confuses me. It's just playing with yourself, but with eight arms. Yeah, why have you got a mix in a spider <laughs> with Solitaire? Just Solitaire is fine as it is. Clock solitaire, and I'll play that as well. Uh, right, anyway, right. So um, we'll we we'll, we'll decide next next uh, week's subject unless anybody has any genuine genuine suggestions uh, while we're closing up. Death. Death, Death. in games. That's uh, and that actually could be a really good topic. Yeah, I love that one. Let's do death. Yeah. Okay. In games. Yeah, obviously. You know, you can't <laughs> play dead. Do you really think we could stretch that out to an hour or two hours? Yes. Yes. Uh, because I'm, think I'm about, have loads of ideas here. It's not only to do with how the, your player avatar might die. Hmm. Uh, is that deliberate? There's all that kind of stuff. There's also the people, the characters that die in games, how it's handled, the attitude towards death, respawning, not respawning, continues, yeah. arcades. Yeah, it's got the mechanics, the artistic so many, side, the story yeah. side. There's a lot Death. to talk about there. It's a big subject. Yeah. As it as it is in real life, it's quite a big subject. All right. Up. Well, then next week's subject is death in games, death. Um, and we'll be back next Wednesday at seven thirty. Uh, go and check our YouTube channel out, forward slash Residence Arcade, and obviously you know what the Twitch channel is. Um, we're also on Facebook and Twitter, and uh, get subscribed and that if you haven't already, because we uh, we like you, we like people watching. And uh, thanks to everyone watching. We've had a, a fair few people in today. And uh, we'll catch you next week. See you later. See you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>